It's about how to change lives. Um, it's about some of the experiences that I've had that make a big ass difference in life and how you operate your life. But uh, let's go back a little bit for me, back when I was a kid. Um, in my early childhood, I was a chronic stutterer. It started apparently when I was five or six or something, some event in my life caused me to be very scared and stutter. Um, I literally stuttered like a Mel Tillis. Well, you probably, most of you don't know who that is. Anyway, it was a, a chronic stutter, like every word I would stammer, you know, and, and have a difficulty speaking. Uh, my parents thought it was a physical thing, probably because it would avoid them thinking about anything that happened that maybe caused that to a little child. So, um, in any case, um, I was a chronic stutterer till I was about 10. And then I got in an argument at school, in grade school, of course, um, and I discovered that when I cussed, when I had an outburst, I could rattle off a bunch of stuff without stuttering. Um, it dawned on me that same moment that my stutter probably isn't physical, right? It's, it was an emotional thing. There was something wrong. Um, in my mind that caused me to stutter. So I started to really think about that at the age of 10. I, I was um, very interested in psychology because of that. It's like, what's causing me to do that? And because it's psychological, I can fix it. All of a sudden, I, was, I knew that I would, and I was the only one to fix it because everybody else, you know, wanted to take other, <laughs> other dramatic actions like cutting under my tongue uh, if you can imagine hearing that in a, in a doctor's office with your parents talking to a doctor about how they're going to maybe cut my tongue because it needs more room to flap around and some bullshit. I can't, I mean, amazing, amazing, stupid stuff um, that probably made me even more fearful um, and caused more stuttering. But because I understood that, I started to understand that, I also started to speak only those things that I really wanted to say. I wouldn't just rattle off like a bunch of kids did back then, uh, you know, just, just random bullshit. So I was very cognizant about what I wanted to say and only say those things. And I didn't stutter doing that. So I practiced diligently doing that for a long time. And when I was 14 and 15, of course, my voice changed and people actually wanted me to speak in class and take over some of those, you know, those speaking roles that you would have, you know, in junior high school and high school because I had the voice, <laughs> right? So um, anyhow, that was, that was an interesting change for me that started me on the path of psychology and really wanted to understand how our brain functions um, at a very early age. Um, that really didn't solve a lot of problems for me throughout high school and beyond. Um, my 20s were a, 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 a catastrophe. Uh, I just wanted to get out of my house and go make money, uh, you know, get, get away from my family and go live on my own. So I, I really focused on work and sales, and that's what I was am good at. Um, and at the age of about 34, I had a, a huge turn in the road, a, a massive fork in the road, because uh, I was married for two years at that point. Um, um, we had a fight. I decided our marriage was over. And I, I was leaving. I was heading. I was living in the Portland, Oregon area in Lake Oswego, at the time. I said, "Screw this! You know, this marriage is done. We're, I'm tired of arguing and not communicating." So, I figured it was, you know, like I always did back then. I blamed everything on others. So I, I was literally on my in the car with the dog in the back seat and my stuff, and I was about halfway to California. I had a job set up uh, lined up in. Um, in Southern Cal that was ready to go. It would have been a great job. But about halfway down, I was about down to Eugene. Uh, yeah, Eugene and I looked in the back in my mirror, saw my dog and my stuff. And I realized this isn't anybody else's fault or anybody else's problem to fix. The common den denominator over the last 10 or 15 years of my problems were me. So I stopped, I turned around and went back. Um, I got, uh, I made a phone call to Mark Effinger, barely knew him. We worked a little bit together um, at that time at another uh, place in Vancouver, Washington. And I asked him, I, I just asked him if I could stay with him for a while. I was splitting up with my wife, but I wanted to solve, I wanted to, to go to counseling and kind of, you know, sort this out. And um, 
bless his heart, he and his wife, uh, Tish, Mark Effinger and Tish, let me stay in a, in their, in a small room in the basement. Uh, and that was, uh, that was an amazing transition because, uh, you know, I, I left a, a beautiful home and a beautiful wife and all that and kind of started over again because I knew I needed to. I, didn't, I couldn't run, I didn't want to run away this time. I wanted to s fix me. So over the period of about a year, um, it did a lot of psychological work, uh, uh, seeing a counselor every week, and I started to discover that we're really looking all for the same sorts of things. We want to feel, you know, happy. We want to find that happiness, that love and fulfillment in our lives, uh, regardless of your income. Um, and uh, it, it, that was an interesting um, thing for me to discover. So um, I studied NLP, Neuro Linguistics Programming. I went to a number of things that would uh, challenge you personally to overcome some barriers in these three and four day workshops, which were amazing. Um, and I also started windsurfing as a, as a hobby. I, I, it, you know, my, my, my then therapist, and he turned into a business counselor after, uh, recognized that I had a bit of a uh, addiction to, um, you know, the rush of, you know, chaos. So he goes, yeah, instead of doing that in business or your personal life, you probably want to do that. You find another way to do that. So uh, anyway, I started windsurfing and that was amazing. But Mark and his wife um, were so sweet and let me just kind of fumble through life for, uh, for a few months. And then I really started to understand psychology and that we can change what's in here. I could change the map. I could change the pictures that I had for my life and start living those dreams rather than the chaos and, and the regrets of the past. So um, that was an amazing thing. My life just expanded incredibly. Um, I had this incredible life that we'll uh, share with you, but it, you know, my, my life grew dramatically over the next uh, 20 years. In fact, my, my, my then, she was still my wife, but we were separated. She saw the transition in me after about a year. She said, I want you to come home. Um, that was my first mistake because <laughs> I like to fix people. I like to think that what I've gone through, others could go through too. And because I'm so dumb and hard headed that others would understand that maybe they can make some changes too and, or, or I could fix them, right? Because you can fix businesses. I can fix a car. I can fix a plane. Um, I can fix people, I thought. That, well, that, that's not the case. So, um, but anyway, uh, I ended up, uh, you know, going home, moving back in uh, with my wife and her daughter. And uh, for a long, <laughs> a long time, for 25 years. And, and, and anyway, <laughs> that would, that's a story on its own for another time. So, Anyhow, it's kind of one of those once upon a time deals, the prince found his way through, right? Um, so once upon a time, this kid grew up into a real man at the age of 34, prosperous as hell for about 20, 25 years, and then shit changed. So if you're anything like me, you've come to a point in your life, maybe when you're 50 or 60, and you discover that things aren't exactly what you had planned. Right? You seem like you may be in a different dimension, right? Somebody else's plan, somebody else's dream, because you're not happy. You know, all the success that I've had in building businesses, owning yachts, you know, expensive vehicles. I've lived in some fantastic homes in Sedona, Arizona, Carlsbad, California, in Florida, and uh, all over, you know, lots of travel. And we were even on the uh, Oprah Winfrey show uh, to support Robert Kiyosaki when he first came out with his first book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because he found out that we were using his book and, um, you know, buying a lot of real estate in Phoenix. And he lived in, and still does, I think, live in Phoenix. I built businesses uh, in the marine industry. I love playing with super yachts, installing our gear on these, you know, huge vessels you know, 150 to 250 foot super yachts that travel the world. Um, you know, until you sit down and discover that, you know, you're not happy, something's wrong. And the fact that many of us, particularly in our 50s and 60s, we find ourselves in a place that we didn't plan on. 
So now what? You know what? You got plenty of life to live. You can get your energy back. You can get your clear thinking, the clarity of thought and your energy back and your, of course, your sex life and everything else that goes with it. I feel like I'm 30. My testosterone is high. I've got tons of energy. I'm in the gym three hours a day, guys. Well, two hours are actually working out. One hour I'm sitting in the sun and taking a shower. So anyway, that's, that's all possible for you also. I'm not unique in, this, in that area. Um, you can do it too, but you just have to make a decision today that you actually want to do something different. You want to experience a different kind of life. Become the man that you've always wanted to be. And you, you know what? You might surprise your wife um, with the fact that you can actually do that. So let's uh, join us on this journey. Vital60.com, Perry Anderson. We've got some amazing stories for you and some amazing methods that you can employ and put into work in your own life.